Deuteronomy 34.1 Vaya al Moshe, me aravot moav el har novo. Rosh ha piska asher al pane yerecho vayarehu Hashem et kol haaretz et ha gilyad ad dan. Translation Moses, he went up from the plains of Moab to the mount, mountain of Nebo, head of Pisgah, which was upon before Jericho. Upon before is uh, sort of an idiom, and we would just say across from. The Lord showed him all the land, the Gilead unto Dan. Now I'm going to go over just a couple of pronunciation issues. First of all, you'll notice that the major punctuation of the sentence in the middle is the atnakta or atnach. And at the end of the sentence is the uh, sofposik and the um, saluk. Now these are major pauses, and so when you read to them, you should read like you're coming up to a semicolon and to a period, respectively. Now, when we go to pro- figure out whether we should pronounce a vocal schwa or a silent schwa, we sometimes have some real tricks. This is an example, because the schwa here appears after a patak. So, since the patak's short, we would normally think that this is a silent schwa. However, there is no dagesh in the bait, and it is a begad kafat letter. So, the reason there's not a dagesh is because the schwa must be vocal, and that takes away a dagesh lene. Therefore, we would pronounce this word with a vocal schwa, me'aravot. One other issue to think of for the moment, and this is the divine name. Now, we call this the Tetragrammaton, uh, named after the four letters. And these, uh, this was such a sacred name that to pronounce it in antiquity would be like walking into the Holy of Holies. So, rather than pronounce it, a substitute word, my Lord, was used in synagogue reading, Adonai. Yet in everyday reading, when it's not Sabbath, the word Hashem, or the name, is used in place of the divine name. So when I come to this word in our, our work, reading out loud, we'll say Hashem, the name, which represents the divine name of the God of Israel.